All right. Well, I'm pretty sure we're done stalling Yay. now. <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, that was uh, not very well planned. Hello. I would like to start off my talk by showing you guys a piece of artwork done by a very talented artist. It's honestly one of my favorites. I hope you like it as well. Here it is. <laughs> yes, I know what you're thinking. This is probably one of the best pieces of artwork you've seen in your entire life. From the cherry shoes to scribbled out sky, you can clearly see the artist is trying to portray a very deep message. So this is the artist of that wonderful piece you just saw. It was made in circa 2011 or so, and honestly, it's just the best. I, I, don't, know, you know, I don't have the words to describe it. Here are more pieces done by the same artist a year or so later. And here's more. These done three years later. And this one also includes humans, only this time they actually look like people. <laughs> and here, here we are with more human drawings. I'm sensing a bit of a pattern. And this is their artwork in 2023, 10 years after the first drawing I showed you. This, was the, this is their art now. Or should I say, this is my artwork now. This was my art journey from four years old to the current day. If you look closely at the two pieces I have up here, you might be able to see a slight difference, but only if you look close enough. Something that I've noticed is when people tend to see my current artwork, they think that I've always been able to draw and paint well, but this simply isn't true, as we've seen with um, that piece. <laughs> and a word that tends to come up a lot is talent. This is because people tend to associate art with talent and use it as a compliment. Although never said to be demeaning, it can have negative connotations. If we look at the definition for talent, a natural aptitude or skill. Natural aptitude? That couldn't be farther from the truth as we've seen with my own art. Even the most talented artists like Monet, Vincent van Gogh, Picasso, and my personal favorite, Bob Ross, they all, their skill was not something they were simply born with. But with all that being said, there will always be people who art may come more naturally to them. But that natural aptitude or talent alone wouldn't get you anywhere without something very important. That's something being perseverance. If we look at the definition of perseverance, doing something despite difficulty or delaying its success. Unlike talent, this word describes art way, way, way more accurately. Because for a lot of artists, including myself, simply calling what we do talent sweeps all of the hard work, the energy and effort we put into our art under a rug, a rug called talent. Another major misconception is that People tend to think that making art is just putting lines and color on paper, but there is more to it. You also have to make it look good. That's pretty important. But you also have to be able to communicate your ideas through your art. What do you want the audience to feel when you look at, their, when you look at your art? You can do this by developing different skills related to the arts. Skills like observation, technique, learning how your materials work, those being some of the more basic ones. For example, if an artist was really good at using, let's say, acrylic paints, they would have to learn a completely new set of skills to use, let's say, watercolors. Despite these two mediums both being paint, the ways they interact with the paper and mix are drastically different. With all of these skills, it takes a lot of time to learn all of them, and progress is not always linear. Up here, I have a graph of what a normal beginner artist improvement looks like. At first, you'll start improving very fast, but as you, time goes on and you grow more advanced, you will also have to tackle more advanced skills and progress will slow down. Let's say you stop drawing for a while, life caught up to you and you have a big project to do and so you haven't had time to draw. Let's see what would happen. Oh no, that's not very good. Drawing and painting in most creative arts are not like riding a bike. You will get worse at them if you haven't practiced in a while. But if you do the exact opposite and practice and draw every single day, you'll see loads of improvement. Because there are so many variables contributing to improvement, you'll see people improving at drastically different rates. For example, these two people. Person one and person two both started drawing at similar times, but person one is improving way faster than person two. This could be for a multitude of reasons. Like I just said, person one could have more time to draw, unlike person two. But a more simple answer could be that person one, the skills required to make art might be easier for them, whether that be because of prior knowledge or something else. 
this is where you get people who seem to have a natural talent for the arts. So how many in the audience think you can draw? If your answer to that is no, why is that? I've heard it so many times. I can't draw. I can barely draw a stick figure. I'm just not talented. One of the major effects of thinking of art as just talent is it pushes people away from the arts, saying that if, the, if art really is just talent, then there's no point in doing it if you don't have that natural talent. But as we've seen with my own art, this simply isn't true. And what most people are doing is pushing themselves away from the arts in fear of failure. Because doing art takes a lot of perseverance, and that perseverance, has, you have to have the willingness to fail, which is scary. And unfortunately, I don't have a solution for this problem. But something that's always helped me is remembering that when you start out something, you're going to be bad, you're going to fail, you're going to fall on your face, but at the end of all of that, you might find something that you truly love doing because there is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. Thank you for listening.